Welcome to Matrix Multiplication Corncast. Glad you could join us. The product of matrices is defined only if the number of columns of the first equals the number of rows of the second. Please say, take a second and jot this down. Very nice. All right, example one. Can we multiply these matrices? What I like to do in a case like this is I like to check the dimensions. The dimensions of this first matrix right here in example A is a 1 by 3. The dimensions of the second matrix are a 3 by 2. And what that little statement is indicating to us is that we need to check the columns of the first matrix and the rows of the second matrix and see if they're equal to one another. Well, I like to draw a little box around those two values right there, and it helps me look at them, and, uh, well, it's easily easy to see that 3 equals 3. So, whenever those things are equal, we're happy, so yes, we can multiply. Okay, dimensions on the second one, and notice on the second example right here that it's just the same matrices flipped. We need to be very careful here. 3 by 2 times a 1 by 3. And just like last time, we need to check to see if our columns equal our rows. Well, again, I draw a little box. And, uh, well, it's pretty obvious to see that 2 does not equal 1. And then that makes us sad because we cannot multiply these. So this problem cannot be done. So again, checking the dimension, dimensions of our matrices, and we're looking for the columns and the rows. Okay, well how does matrix multiplication work? Before we do this, let's check our dimensions to see if we can do this. This matrix is a 1 by 2. This matrix is a 2 by 3. And uh, what we notice is that our columns equal our rows. So we indeed can, can multiply this particular matrix, or these matrices. Well, the reason why we need to compare the two is it's telling us that we have two elements, or two columns right here. And the real reason why we're doing that is we are really trying to find out how many elements are in this particular row. So row 1 actually has two elements within it. And the reason why we're checking this 2 right here is so we can see that we have two rows. And the real reason why we're doing that is we're really counting how many elements are in this uh, column right here. So matrix multiplication works like this. What we're going to do is we're going to multiply row 1 times column 1. And it's just like it sounds. We're going to multiply. So here's how matrix multiplication works. We're going to take the first element in row 1 and multiply it to the first element in column 1. So that means we're going to multiply the 2 times the 1. And then we're going to take the second element in row 1 and multiply it to the second element in column 1. So 3 times 3. And then we ask ourselves a real simple question. What is multiplication really? Isn't multiplication really just repeated addition? So what we're going to do here is we're going to add those two products together. And that's going to give us the element in row 1, column 1 of our new matrix. So let's recap here. We're going to multiply row 1 times column 1, and then we're going to get one element in row 1, column 1. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and mosey on over to column 2 here. So I'm going to move my yellow color strip over that way. And the nice thing about matrix multiplication is that it's pretty much the same process once we get the hang of it. So again, now we're going to multiply the first element in row 1 to the first element in column 2. So 2 times 0. Then we're going to multiply the second element in row 1 to the second element in column 2. So 3 times negative 1. And just like before, what are we going to do with these two products? Well, we're going to add them together. And that's because matrix or multiplication is repeated addition. So what we end up getting here is row 1, column 2. So when we multiply row 1, column 2, we're going to get an element, row 1, column 2. So since we have three columns in this particular problem right here, we're going to get three columns, row 1, column 3 this time. 
So now I'm going to move my little color strip over here to column 3. I'm going to repeat the before said process. First element times first element. 2 times negative 2. Second element times second element. 3 times 0. And just like before, I'm going to add those that product together. Okay, so what I end up with here is I end up getting one row with three columns. So I end up getting a 1 by 3 matrix. Now it's just order of operations. 2 times 1 plus 3 times 3, well, 2 plus 9 is 11. 0 plus a negative 3 is negative 3. Negative 4 plus 0 is negative 4. So this ends up being my product of these two matrices up here. And again, what I end up with is a 3 by 1 matrix. So now what I want to do is I'm going to bring your attention to what's left over up here. Because I compared my columns with my rows, what's left is rows and columns. So the, one of the another benefits of checking your dimensions before you multiply is it tells you what kind of matrix you're going to get when you're done. So basically matrix multiplication is a way of multiplying rows times columns. So as long as you remember rows times columns, you're going to be okay. Okay, to further illustrate this, how doesn't matrix multiplication work? Well, again, we're going to multiply rows times columns. And when I look at this first scenario right here, row 1 times column 1, I know that this first element, negative 0.3, can be multiplied to 0 0.2. First element times first element. But where the problem happens is now, what on earth are we going to multiply to this 3 right here? There's nothing right here for it to multiply to. So this 3 doesn't have a dancing partner, if you will. Because this uh, second matrix right here only has one row, it doesn't have two rows, there's nothing for this particular column to multiply to. And because there's nothing for this column to multiply to, then we cannot multiply this. So again, in our first example, matrix B didn't work because our dimensions didn't match. So this is what happens when our dimensions don't match. This problem cannot be done. So hopefully that uh, further illustrates how this process works, or in this case, doesn't work. Okay, let's take a look at a couple of examples. And just like always, let's check the dimensions. First matrix, you guessed it, 2 by 2. Second matrix, you guessed it, 2 by 3. I'm going to draw my little box to see if I can do this. Well, does 2 equal 2? It sure does. That makes me happy. And the nice thing about this is that I'm going to get a 2 by 3 matrix. So that tells me what I'm going to get. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw myself a nice big 2 rows by 3 column matrix. And the reason why I do that is so I'm going to give myself plenty of room to work here. Okay, so I'm going to take out my little color strips again. And again, rows times columns. Always, always, always. So row 1 times column 1 is going to end up in row 1, column 1. First element times first element. 1 times 1. Second element times second element. 3 times 0. What do I do? Add them up. Okay. Now, once I'm done with row 1, column 1, now I'm going to go to row 1, column 2. So I'm going to move my color strip over here to column 2. Again, first times first, so 3, or excuse me, 1 times negative 3. And second times second, so 3 times negative 1. What do I do? Again, I add them up. So as you can see, it's like I'm repeating the same process over and over again, except I'm doing it with different columns. So I think once you get the hang of this little process, then, uh, then it's pretty easy. So now I'm done with that column. So now I'm going to go over here to row 1, column 3. So that means I need to move my little color strip over here to column 3. And now I have those values. So first times first, so 1 times 0. And second times second, 3 times 2. And again, I add them together. Okay, so now I'm done with that first row. Now I need to work on the second row. But notice my pink color strip here is still in the first row. 
So let's now move my color strip down to the second row. And now I want to do row two, column one. So I'm going to move my other strip back here to the first uh, column right here. So now that I'm in row two, column one, now my uh, product is going to go in row two, column one. So first element times first element. So negative two times one. And second element times second element. Zero times zero. And again, I'm going to add them together. Now row two, column two. So move my column strip over here to column two. And repeat. Negative two times negative three. So negative two times negative three. And again, once you get this little algorithm down, this process becomes really easy. Zero times negative one. And again, I'm going to add them together. And then last but not least, this last uh, column here. So now it's row two, column three. So now I'm in row two, column three. So here we go. First times first. So negative two times zero. And 0 times 2. So second times second. And again, add them together. All right. So once I'm done here, I'm going to go ahead and just do the order of operations. 1 plus 0 is 1. Negative 3 plus a negative 3 is going to give me uh, negative 6. 0 plus uh, 6 is 6. Negative 2 plus 0 is negative 2. 6 plus 0 is 6, and 0 plus 0 is 0. So there is my final 2 by 3 matrix, which is the answer for this particular product right here. Okay, last example. Once again, I'm going to check my dimensions. This is a 2 by 3, and this one's a 3 by 2. I'm going to check my columns and make sure they equal my rows. They do, so that makes me happy. And that tells me I'm going to get a 2 by 2 matrix. So just like last time, I'm going to go ahead and draw myself a nice big 2 by 2 matrix. Two rows and two columns. And again, that's just so I have some room to work. All right, pull out my little color strips. I'm going to have my rows and my columns. So right now my color strips are in row 1, column 1. So that means my stuff has to go into row 1, column 1. And again, rinse and repeat. Repeat the process. First element times first element. 1 times 1. 1. Second element times second element. So negative 2 times negative 3 is 6. And third element times third element. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. And add them all up. So since this is subtraction, I'm not going to put a plus negative. I'm just going to leave it as subtraction. And there's my sum. Okay, now I'm going to go to row 1, column 2. So I'm going to move my color strip over here to column 2. And repeat. First element times first element. 1 times 0 is 0. Second element times second element. So negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. And then finally, third element times third element. So 3 times 3 is 9 and add them all up. So now I'm done with the first row. So that means I'm going to move my color, yellow color strip down to the second row. And I'm going to move my color strip back to the first column. So now I'm going to do row 2, column 1. First element times first element. 0 times 1 is 0. Second element times second element. So negative 3 times negative 3 is a positive 9. And third element times third element. 0 times negative 2 is going to be 0. And then I'm going to add them up. And lastly, row 2, column 2. Move my color strip over here to column 2. First element times first element. 0 times 0 is 0. Second element times second element. So negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. And 0 times 3. So the third element times third element is 0. And again, I'm going to add them up. Okay, now it's just time to do order of operations. So 7 minus 6 is 1. Negative 4 plus 9 is a 5. 0 plus 9 plus 0 is 9. And 0 minus 6 plus 0 is negative 6. And then that's my 2 by 2 matrix. That is my final answer. So the product of those two matrices gives me that matrix right there. And life is good.
Well, I hope that that uh, matrix multiplication process was enlightening. And again, the only thing you kind of have to remember is it's always going to be rows times columns and uh, add up the products and repeat the process many times.